Billy, when did you feel it was safe to hang up the world in gloves and take on the world of uh, the folk music and comedy stage? Oh, that was easy. I, uh, I was doing the clubs at night, you know, folk music clubs and playing my banjo and everything. And I, I was working with an older welder called Willie McInnes and uh, he played guitar. And uh, it was he who encouraged me to play all the time. And one time we had finished work and we were sitting talking and uh, we, go, we went on holiday on a time called Fair Friday. It was Glasgow Fair, halfway through July. And this would be like March. And he said, so when are you going to quit this and go on the road and be a hippie and all that and play your banjo? Because I was hairy and, and they had a long beard. They used to call me Ho Chi Minh. <laughs> <laughs> this long beard. And, uh, and I said, Fair Friday. I'm going to quit and quit the holidays. And he said, nah, he said, you're lying. He said, they all say that, fair. He said, isn't it fair? You'll say Christmas. And at the Christmas, you'll say next fair. He said, there's nothing worse than an old man in here knowing he could have got out years ago. And it frightened me so much, you know. I thought, my God, I can't do that. And so I, I, I left on the Friday. <laughs> and, uh, and that was it. It was over. Just no more welding. I thought, I'll give it three months. But that, that was just 30 years. Having been erect for the last 30 years, how has the inspiration for your comedy changed since your early days with the Humble Bums? It hasn't changed much at all. I, I really I don't understand it very well, what it is. I, I've tried, God knows I've tried, because I would like, I would love to create it off stage. The way people like Ben Elton and guys like that do. Robin Williams, I guess. Although he's, he's nuts as well. <laughs> uh, I, I find it in the most obscure places. I, I don't mean to, and I don't notice it at the time. But when I get on stage, I think about little wee things usually. You be on the way home and you see a little cigarette packet or a bicycle and it reminds you of something and boof, it just comes. So I, I always go unprepared on tour. I don't know where I get it. It's everywhere. It might be the Toblerone that was in the refrigerator in the hotel. It might be the soap. It might be the da 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 da. It's, it's always a little thing that leads me somewhere else and I've no idea why. I think I'm not very well though. <laughs> I, I had my head examined in, in Los Angeles. My, my daughter Daisy suffers very badly from attention deficit disorder and various other intellectual bits and pieces. And uh, the other, my, my older daughter thought she might. So we went along, and one of my other daughters, Amy, so we all went along and had her electronically <laughs> tested our brains for waves, for beta waves and alpha waves. They told me, but it was such a morass of boring data that I forget what it was. And I am, I'm the one it's all coming from. It's my brain that's, <laughs> that's knackered. <laughs> And I, I don't retain uh, information very well. I can read a whole book and enjoy it immensely, but I can't remember an awful lot about it. And, and, but, but it's kind of helped me. It's actually benefited me greatly. And so, so I don't care. But that, that's, that's kind of roughly... I hope that answer does you. It's, it's baffled me. <laughs> Billy, I'd like to know if you have uh, any superstitions about performing, uh, like a lucky pair of underpants or something like oh, that. Oh, no, I don't have anything like that. And I'll tell you why. When I was young, I was in the parachute regiment. It was the, the, the sort of, the, how do you put it, it's the auxiliary army. They used to call it the territorial army. You just join and go weekends and three weeks here. And, and I was in the parachute, the airborne. And we, at the parachute school in England, we were encouraged never ever to have a lucky charm. Because if you lose it, you can throw everybody else off, going, where's my, where's my wee goblin? I can't fly. Right, and they're saying, the baddies are coming. Never had a baddie, where's my goblin? You're setting a wee trap for yourself. You know, if, you, if it's your lucky underpants, mine would be gone years ago. <laughs> Gee, they're just whoosh, they're just <laughs> everywhere, you know. For such a windswept and interesting guy, who the hell dresses you? Oh, <laughs> this is a thing when you become 50. Well, for me, it was like earlier than that, but I've been very comfortable since I've been 50. But 
Since I was about 20, I tried to be windswept and interesting, as you say, <laughs> and wear denim and cowboy boots and all that. And it was kind of we rare then, you know. And, uh, and it was never, I've never dressed like the accepted mode. I never wanted to. I always wanted to. I wanted people to say, that's Billy Connolly over there. I, th I was terrified that I might go through life and nobody noticed I'd been here. You know? <laughs> so, I... <laughs> What would you do if, at one of your concerts, Jesus walked in, sat in the front row, and started taking notes? What would you say to him? <laughs> I'd say, how does it feel to be your own father? <laughs> relationship does that make your children to you? <laughs> I, 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 oh God, what a good question. We could find all this stuff I've lost, maybe. <laughs> no, I think I would say, how does it feel? You know? <laughs> <laughs> what a question. What a brilliant question. Oh my God. Well, I would start by saying, I, I, I never meant all that stuff. <laughs> I'm a comedian, I'm sorry, kidding. I've got my rosaries in the room. Um, Billy, what has been your most embarrassing moment on stage or off? My most embarrassing moment on stage was you, uh, so small you probably won't even find it embarrassing. I, it was, I fell. I was in St Andrews. There was a... The, there was a folk club in the Star Hotel in St Andrews, which was the ace one to get. If you were good, they booked you, you know. And, and if you were booked for the Christmas gig, oh, you're a superstar. You must be on your way to great things. Well, they booked me for the Christmas gig. And I was, well, oh, I was in a band. I was, there was only two of us at the time. And I walked on, I had a mandolin in one hand and a guitar in the other hand. And I had cowboy boots that sloped very much at the back. And I stepped onto the stage went right on my backside, but I sat on the mandolin <laughs> and, it, and smashed it a bit. I have never, I, I didn't want to get up off the floor. <laughs> the things that embarrass, embarrass me aren't like the things that embarrass other people. I get, I get very, like, do you know when I get embarrassed? It's the weirdest thing. If, when people shout at me in the street, you know what, you, know, you would think that I'd be used to it by now. Billy! <laughs> You know, I just, what are you, what are when I'm doing well, you know, I don't know, I don't know what I'm supposed to do, there's no book, you know. <laughs> and people who pump their horns often give me a fright, because I'm, I'm usually deep in thought, I love being deep in thought and dreaming and da da da, walking along, me, <laughs> hi, you know, and they're nice. And it's, it's, it's odd, you know. The, my favourite in the street was a woman in Dublin, I've told it in the States, it's the absolute truth. I was walking along in the drizzle in Dublin and a woman came towards me and she said, Oh, Billy Connolly, you're the spitting image of yourself. <laughs> ah, so lovely. But you know, it's a, it's a great, like people say, Billy, you go, you say, they go, I love you. Thank you. Do you know what? You know what? My husband and I are going to become parents for the first time and I was wondering what um, experiences you had as a first time father. Oh, golly. It's, I love it. Do you know that? I love, but I, I don't know if I'm, maybe there's a lot of guys like me, you know, but they don't like telling everybody. You know, a lot of people like to be uh, the thing that everybody thinks of, that men are like. But I, I, I loved, you know, like changing my children. I, I never found that. Other people's children, I'm not sure, I've never done that. <laughs> but changing my babies and cleaning them up, I loved every second of it, you know. And I used to put their legs, my favorite thing, I would put them, you know how they're all bow-legged? So I'd put their legs together and straighten them out. And, and they, they're all creases like this. this. This little chevron comes right up the body, but it's lumps like that. And you can play them, you go brrrring, brrrring, and they love it. And I love rubbing the soles of their feet together. Tick -a -tick -a -tick 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 -tick. And, I, 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 and I'm really good and I'm fast, you know. I love them. But I would say, if you're having a baby, 
get the baby into your bed, you know, and you, you won't roll over on the baby. It, if you're sober, you won't roll over. <laughs> Don't do it if you drink, you're in. But the baby, see, you, you, I remember reading that the cot deaths, you know, what do they call it here, cot deaths? You know, infant death. Infant death, Sudden infant, infant thingy. Death. Hi. The, uh, whatever they call it now. But they used to call it cot death. And it said there were no instances of this in China at all because there's no cots in China. Right? <laughs> you always take the baby to bed. Oh, really? Yeah. Aye. And we've done it with all our babies. You take them to bed and they want to drink from their mama, they go like that, and then they go to sleep. <laughs> and then we've got a cot, and they're dead easy, and you can make it if you don't sell them. A wee cot where the, the mattress comes up the same height as your mattress. And you, so you put them on that. And, and when they want you, they roll over because they're heat-seeking missiles. They, <laughs> they even do it when they're sleeping. They know where you are. We used to do it with the baby. I said, watch this. So put the baby over sleeping. And I'd lie and it goes... Doo -doo 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 -doo. <laughs> right up next. And then after a wee while, they want out of the bed. They don't want to be in there. They want to be in a bed. It's, it's daddy. We've done it with all the girls and it's been the doddle. Aye. Just love your baby. Aye. You're going to do that anyway. I can see it in your face. They, I love the way they smell, actually. Babies and I bite them where the neck joins the shoulder. <laughs> That's what I love best from behind. 